After the catastrophic Hurricane Maria ripped through Puerto Rico, the loss was massive. It took almost a year for the entire island to have electricity again. It became the duty of Chef Jose Enrique to feed his community. He served thousands of meals out of his popular restaurant. A few years back, Tiara and I visited his restaurant. It was there that I got to experience his passion for feeding people. He was a food and wine best new chef. He was born and raised here. He's distinctly Puerto Rican. He's probably one of the most authentic people I've ever met. Hey, no, so what do we got here? So this is a red snapper that I just brought in today. It's beautiful. So it's deboned, so basically we fillet it from the inside out and take all the pin bones. I put cornstarch on the fillet side, so it's nice and crispy on the bottom. Then you get this crispy skin on top, and it's served with this avocado and papaya mojo. It's pickled like red onions, which are pickled in lime juice, tomatoes, peppers, and then avocado and papaya. So you get the creaminess from the avocado, yeah. but then the papaya brings out a lot of sweetness to it. Here we have classic, like an empanada. I guess similar to a schnitzel, except it's fried. So here we're using beef tenderloin, pounded out, fried, two fried eggs on top, which we call a caballo, rice, pink beans, and the tostones are on the side. And then over here, batata, or boniato is called as well. It's basically like a root or tuber down here in the, in the Caribbean. It's like sweet, sweet potato. Yeah, it's not a potato, but it's kind of like a sweet potato. Yeah, almost like a yam. And then it gets a, the mojo on top as well. Is that a native? Vegetable, or is it, was that brought yeah. with somebody yeah. at some point? Here in the Caribbean, you'll find a lot of roots and tubers. And over here, you've got a little local hot sauce, which is classic in Puerto Rico. You always have the hot sauce on the side of the meal itself. Yeah, dishes aren't that spicy. No. Well, throughout the Caribbean, you've got a lot of settlers, right? Like we had the Spaniards. You have like English in Jamaica, right? Or you have Dutch or French throughout the Caribbean. So the Spanish, they're not really into hot food. Right. So when you're here, you have chilies growing throughout the island, wild, right? But they're not being used because of that tendency where Spanish aren't really into hot food. So it's like, we're gonna use it. We'll just put it on the side if you don't want it in your food. And then it became a classic. So now everywhere you go, you're probably gonna find hot sauce on the side. What kind of um, chilies is it used? So right now, this has red Thai chili, habanero, and caballero chilies. And I always do the same oh, recipe. Nice. And then I puree it. And that's, that's the end result. A little vinegar in there. No vinegar. No, no vinegar. No vinegar. Wow. Whatever acid you get comes out of the tomato itself. Oh, okay. <laughs> We've been hearing a lot that there's pretty much three influences. Spanish, the native Taina, is that how you say it? Taino, Taino, Taino Indians. And then and the, um, Africans. the Africans. Yep. What well, was here before everyone else came here? Well, what was here was the Taino Indians. Okay. And, and what were they eating? Well, mainly roots and tubers. Oh, okay. okay. Like a lot of yuca. Right. And did they grow a lot of their food? Well, they had to. They weren't importing anything in, no. the, in the 1500s. How much is brought in now? Right now, right now, a lot. Yeah. Right now, we bring a lot out. I mean, when agriculture got cut out of Puerto Rico, you know, and basically we become dependent. So you end up having to import a lot of yeah. food. Yeah, Hawaii, we bring in 90%. Yeah. You do? So here, it's probably close to that. Are you seeing the pendulum swinging back where people are well, getting more in? Yeah, and you know what? I think a lot has to do with how big food is right now. Every other channel you change is like a food show now. Right. It becomes conscious to where like, wait, I want to eat better food. And how does it get better for me? Like picking an eggplant, slicing it, and serving it. It goes back to that. So searching the best food possible, it starts growing. And now you're actually starting to see people here who are cultivating a lot of greens and a lot of roots. and it's coming back slowly, but it's coming back. Yeah, nice. That's great. I wish I could do that. I, have a, I don't have a green thumb, though. No, I've well, got you, a need, black you need one. to hire someone, you know, or, or <laughs> have a friend do oh. it. No. So, well, you know. <laughs>